Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be starting our webinar soon. This conversation is being live streamed to Given Hours Facebook and YouTube channel. While we wait for everyone to pop on, please let us know in the chat or comments where you're joining us from. And feel free during the conversation to put your questions in the chat as well. We'll be starting shortly. Welcome everyone to today's webinar. We will be talking to an amazing group of individuals about where they find hope, inspiration, how they create reminders and stick to the positive. Before I hand the floor to our moderator, I'd like to go over a few helpful pointers about your 180 playbook. As you know, if you joined us for our webinar last month and or have signed up to receive our weekly tips via email, your 180 playbook is an individualized tool that you can use to keep focused on what's important to you. This month, we are collecting all the things that will go in your 180 playbook and everyone's playbook will look a little bit different and you'll be gathering your items from different places. Today, you'll hear from our guests where they have found some of their 180 playbook items. First, here are some tips to keep in mind as you collect all your items. Ask yourself these questions. What's important to me? What accomplishments do I want to remind myself about? How can I remind myself to remain in the present? These questions will help guide you as you figure out what you want to add to your 180. You may wanna think of collecting items from various life categories. Here are some ideas. You'll find this list on our website so you can refer back to it. For example, include a picture of three people who inspire you to be a better you. List out your qualities and add a picture of an actual moment when you're displaying that quality. Speaking of our website, we're collecting 180 playbook images from all of you. Submit your item on our website, check the chat or comments for the link, and scroll down to number one on the website and submit them there. We'll collect them all and we're gonna create a collective 180 playbook. Items from your 180 can be found everywhere, but here's a starting point if you get stuck. Check out podcasts, books, songs, films. Maybe you find a tidbit from a support group you're part of, or maybe you go through your day and you hear something on the radio or from a colleague that inspires you to write down a quote on a post-it note. Stay present and keep your eyes and your mind open. Lastly, here are some helpful tips. Collect your items in one place. Next month in October, we'll be connecting them all together. Do a little at a time. There's no pressure to finish in a certain time period. Remember, this is a living tool. You'll constantly be adding or taking things away as you master various things or need to work on others. This is an inspirational tool, but keep it real and down to earth. This is supposed to be something to remind you of what you've accomplished and who you are. So when doubts arise, you'll be reminded of what's important to you and where you have succeeded. 
And with that, I'm going to ask all our wonderful panelists to turn on their videos. And I'm, and I'm going to pass it on to Chris Colbert, our moderator, for him to quickly introduce himself and our amazing panelists. Thank you all for joining us today. And remember, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Thank you, Kristen. And uh, thank you, Nikki, and the whole Given Hours team. Uh, thank you all, uh, audience, for being here and being part of this conversation. And thank you to our panelists who I will introduce you to here shortly, but uh, you know, first and foremost, really appreciate you know Given Hour again for all the work that you do and uh, you know bringing us this 180 playbook, which Stephanie Sosak here has has uh, you know been a a big proponent in bringing all of us. So you know, I want to go around the room and first starting with Stephanie Sosak, who is a French American actress who has been featured in many projects, including the ABC hit series A Million Little Things uh, and movies like The Devil Wears Prada and Iron Man Three. Uh, Stephanie got a late start on the acting scene at the age of 30, and as her roles got bigger, so did the pressure. And this pushed her to address mindset and discover its interconnection with performance. And uh, Stephanie, thank you for being here. And uh, just for your audience here, I, I, as I introduce everybody, I want them to also let you know some of their social media handles. That way, uh, you can tweet out or you know, send out Instagram posts or, or things, those little tidbits, uh, nuggets that you found valuable in the conversation. So. Thank you, Stephanie, for being here and let us know how to follow you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Steph Shortstack. And that's it. <laughs> Great. And next up, we have Alan Levy Simmons, uh, who is a U.S. Marine Corps combat veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Alan is a survivor of an RPG blast. He's also serving as uh, he's using that battle within his PTSD and suicidal thoughts to inspire and encourage survivors of trauma to live a purposeful life. Alan, thank you for being here. Thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. I'm Mr. Never Stop, Never Quit, Repeat, Alan Levi Simmons. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, social media, uh, my website, alanlevisimmons.com. Uh, you'll learn more about me uh, during this whole process. So I'm just glad to be here. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Alan. And uh, next up, we have uh, Anna Shinoda, who is the author of Learning Not to Drown, a story about a young girl who struggles to preserve her own identity amidst the chaotic, dysfunctional family unit. As a mental health advocate, Anna serves as a senior advisor to Give an Hour for their Books Change Direction initiative, and, uh, which is a campaign that strives to inspire responsible representation of mental health and illness within stories. Thank you for being here, Anna. Thank you. Um, and if anybody is interested in following me, I am on Instagram and uh, primarily Instagram under Anna Shinoda. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. All of it is at Anna Shinoda across the board. Um, and my, my website is AnnaShinoda.com, although I don't really update it that much anymore, but there is some pertinent information up there. Well, we'll forgive you for that. But yes, make sure you follow her on social media and Again, with all of our panels, if there's things that you take away from this conversation that you feel like others need to know, uh, please feel free in tagging them, tagging Give an Hour um, as, as we go through this conversation. So I think a great place to start would be with you, Stephanie, as the creator of the 180 Playbook. Uh, we'd love to understand a little bit more, especially for those who may not have been here for our webinar last month. You know, can you tell us more about what the 180 Playbook is and what inspired you to create it? Sure. So what it is is part of my daily ritual. Uh, in the morning to help me get centered and connected to what's important to me in a nutshell so that when all the outside noise comes in uh, my I'm more able to respond to it according to you know how I want to show up um, it's called the 180 because it's a 180 on how I used to start my morning which used to be by turning on my phone and connecting with the outside world texts and emails and uh, social media and news alerts. And basically then, uh, you know, 10 minutes within the day, I don't know where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be wherever all this outside noise is going to take me. And um, I, like you said, when I started, when my roles got bigger, uh, I really had a hard time with anxiety and people pleasing and, uh, being afraid of not being good enough and that impacted my performance because all this fear all this noise of uh, you know feeling like an outsider all this stuff so uh, i got help and got guidance but then i realized where does all this guidance go um all the advice that you get um 
I'm going to remember it for a week, but then I'm going to forget it. So uh, it was actually my husband's idea to create a central location where we put all these things that are important to us. And it was a game changer for me. I would, before I'd go on set, I would look at my 180. Like you said, everybody's 180 is going to be different. Um, but, and it's forever evolving because whatever you're working on, you can put in there. And um, what I found was when the negative chatter or the doubt would creep in, uh, whatever the advice, the guidance that's in my 180 would come to mind and it would allow me to say, ooh, uh, I can redirect right now. So that's what it is in a nutshell. Part of my daily ritual to remember the guidance that we all get to become a better individual. Yes, and, and daily self-care is so important. And, you know, we should be treating our mental and emotional uh, health the same way we treat our physical health and working out on a regular basis. And the 180 Playbook allows us to have those tools at our disposal. So I really appreciate that intentionality that you put behind creating. Uh, you know, one of those first things that, that you have us doing in this, in this month here is creating that collection that you just mentioned. Do you mind sharing, uh, Stephanie, a piece of that collection that you use for yourself? Uh, sure. One thing that helped me with anxiety um, was uh, from a psychologist who said, uh, I'm done being a child and worrying about what other people are thinking. And I will do that. There's my little, that's part of my little 180. I will do that through loving them more and myself. Um, and that really helps me. I'm done being a child because this anxiety feeling, this fear of not being good enough, uh, of being different, of losing my identity to go into Anna's book, uh, that comes all, goes all the way back to when I was a child. And so uh, when I see that slide, it's like, or when I feel that feeling, it, it, it almost, you know, can make me smile sometimes. And it's like, there you go, this little child in there. It's okay, I'll take care of you. And I'll do that by loving myself more and loving people more. Uh, that's beautiful. And um, Anna, I want to you know, let us know if you're comfortable telling us, what is something that you've been working on and, and you know, a piece of your collection that kind of helps you stay grounded? Um, I've always had to work on confidence, self-confidence. And um, something that I have is I always keep this post-it note. I wrote this down. I think it was like the first week of, of therapy that I was in maybe 15 years ago and maybe even longer than that, maybe 18 years ago. And my therapist had me write this down on a post-it note in her office. And I always keep it in the desk drawer so I can remember But it says, um, nothing is wrong with you except that you have been led to believe there is something wrong with you. And um, this is just kind of a, a good reminder that um, it's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to be myself. It's, it's just um, okay to accept myself for who I am. And of course, working on improving myself is is different than that this is about like that core belief of like there's nothing inherently wrong with me and and anything that i want to work on then is not like wrong with me it's just something to work on yeah i think you touched on something that's really important just that patience with yourself as you're going through this journey like how do you how do you balance that with outside noise kind of telling you how you should feel or or you know what you're doing is right or, or incorrect You know, I think that the best way for me to personally balance that is I have my trusted groups of like friends and family that I know will always lift me up if I am feeling a certain way or if I even have to like bounce something off of them and say kind of like, is this, is it me or is it the situation? Like what's going on to kind of give me um, a compass perhaps. And I think I really, by the way, I really like post-it notes. So I have, if I'm having like a big meeting, I will, I actually have like post-it notes of my, my best friend's names that I will put um, on like around my computer to think like, okay, 
you know, what would they think? Or when I get off this call, if I'm feeling a little discombobulated, I can call them. And it just kind of like grounds me during that moment to, um, you know, this, this great web of friendships. And of course, my, my husband is included in that and, and um, you know, my family members as well. I really like that. I may have to uh, order me some post-it notes now. <laughs> um, Alan, how about yourself? You know, what, what is it that you're working on and, and how do you use your collection to, to help you out? So I, um, I'm very thankful for this given our project, uh, this campaign uh, for Change Direction, because I was uh, someone that did, I still do sometimes wake up in the morning, go straight to my phone, make sure I share one of my old videos. Like I, I'm, I'm programmed as my own business owner to do those things on social media. But thanks to you guys, I've been more aware of it. And I'm like, oh no, put the phone down for at least 10 minutes. Alan, just, just think and clear your mind for 10 minutes uh, for, you know, for the morning. And I've been doing that or I'll walk to my car, just take a walk outside um, and just reflect. But I wanted to share, uh, I'm a man of, of words, as they would say. So like everything I have, like notebooks, you know, um, I have tons of notebooks in my house and there, there are so many things written down. And my first uh, thing here in my journal is uh, from Sunday, April 4th of 2021 when I actually started journaling again and it was my grandmother's heavenly birthday and um, I wanted to share that because my grandmother is someone that was very influential in my life and as far as my faith my my beliefs and how I how, how I walk on this earth it was all thanks to my grandmother so getting back to my anchor uh, I have that as one of my notes that I want to talk about today is having an anchor I, I realize that journaling is my anchor because I'm allowed to uh, write out my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, and be real transparent and vulnerable um, in my journaling. So, yes. That's great. And uh, if you can see there, I think all you participants can see, we have a, a little poll going. Uh, you know, do you find journaling useful for yourself as well? And apologies for any background noise here. I'm in New York City, so you might get sirens from time to time. But yeah, Alan, I think that's so important, being able to write down those thoughts and sometimes be able to take a step back and, and look at where you are in that moment. And even months later, see that mm -hmm. progress that you've made or sometimes see how you're maybe backsliding and you can kind of catch yourself and reverse course. Do you find that valuable? Definitely, definitely. Um, I, I find myself not wanting to go to certain hot areas. And when I say hot areas, it's like memories or, or certain things that really tear me apart, like the what ifs, what if I would have, what if I did this, what if I did that? So reflecting and journaling can be good or it could be something that will tear you down because you're not prepared to travel down those roads. You know, so make sure that when you're traveling down those, those past roads in your life that you're ready to encounter the things that you faced along that journey. Um, I, I'd say that is a very important, you know, when you're journaling. No, good point. And yeah, always seek a, a, med a medical professional, you know, a therapist who can really help you down that journey, um, you know, help you have responsible ways of addressing some of the things that you're trying to address. So excellent point. Um, and to the audience, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention earlier as well, use the chat function to ask any questions of our panelists or, or our panel as a whole. Um, I'll try my best to make sure we, we get to, to some, if not all of you. Um, but we want to make sure that we answer some of the questions that you may have. So as we continue going through this conversation, don't be shy. Um, and so I'll mention for myself in here, you know, I, I have a real tough time being present. I run multiple businesses and I, I work as a podcaster. So I'm on the road dealing with a lot of uh, emotional kind of topics. And so for me, I, I utilize pictures. I, I love taking um, photos and I love being out in nature. So for me, that's kind of how I stay grounded in the present in terms of going out and like exploring nature and all this. But sometimes when I'm back home, I still want to have that experience and still get taken back to that moment. So you can kind of see behind me all these pictures that I have up on my wall. And, you know, this big piece back here are all images that I've taken on vacations or even when I'm at work, just getting away for a half an hour, an hour and taking a picture on top of a mountain or, you know, at the beach. And so it just helps remind me that, okay, there's more to life than just this work. And also like, hey, take a second to breathe. You breathe in this moment. You remember how good it felt? Remember to take that deep breath. So for me, you know, that's how I stay grounded. And it's part of my collection that I'm putting together as part of this 180 playbook. Um, back over to you, Stephanie. You know, I think the 180 playbook also hits on something that's super important, which is that daily self-care that we mentioned. You know, can you speak to why that is so important to, to make sure that you're constantly maintaining and checking in with yourself? 
Uh, yeah, because I mean, when I wake up in the morning, every day is different. I don't know how I'm going to wake up, what kind of state of mind I'm in. Maybe I didn't sleep well. Um, maybe I have something important and all of a sudden I feel like the pressure, something threw me off balance. Um, so it's a ritual and I found, and, and my ritual, so it has many things. I do a gratitude practice. I have a, it's called the five minute journal, which is an amazing thing. Uh, it, it prompts you every day to have three things you're grateful for, three things that would make today great. Uh, that you're in control of and then an affirmation and then at night you do it again. So that's part of my ritual. I meditate um, and then I look at my 180 and I just find it that one when I do that, I'm just like, whew, I'm calm. Um, I feel okay in my own skin. I'm reminded of things that I'm learning that I'm working on from, you know, my mentors, coaches. And I also get creative. You know, I'm an artist. And a lot of times after that, it just, it fuels me. It energizes me. Um, and it reminds me of all that. Yeah, it, it's just a way to connect with my inner world. And I'm a better person for it. If I connect with myself, uh, with, with love, with my values, uh, my guiding principles, I'm going to bring something better to the world than my anxiety, my tension, my uh, stress, better to my kids, you know, <laughs> that's, it's just like, you know, I'm French, we, 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 people joke that we, we smell, we don't wear deodorant, I wear I deodorant know. every day, <laughs> but it's like nothing lasts, so you have to do it every day, when, a lot of times, I, for anyone who's ever gone to therapy, you leave your therapist's office, and you're like, yes, ah, oh, you feel so good, so, but what happens from week to week in between that time? So you need something every day to just remind you. They're just reminders. That's what it is. Yeah, and I, I like also, and I, I use this word a lot because it's one of my new favorite words, but intentionality, again, of, of how you're talking about when you kind of do these check-ins. So starting your day with this, uh, you know, looking at your collection or kind of thinking intuitively about where you are instead of just popping up and jumping into your work routine. Like I... I am very guilty of that in the past. It's just like uh, the first thing I do is check my email and all of a sudden you just thrust yourself into work and like you wonder why you wake up with your heart pounding because you've just you've added stress to your life just right out of the gate. So he, know, I really yeah, and, I, and those emails you get, I don't mean to interrupt, but you know, you will have gotten emails that rub you the wrong way. You wake and you're like, oh, and then that that sets you like your mind is hijacked by the I love this expression. Your mind is hijacked by all the outside noise. Um, so it's like whew, take a take a pause before we we get hit. <laughs> yeah, that's perfectly put. And I, I wish I would have learned this advice uh, years ago. I am trying to practice it better now. And again, like I think the way that you have have put it in the context here makes so much sense. You know, Anna, how about yourself? You know, how do you start your daily routine? Is there, are there certain things that you do purposely to make sure that you get off on the right foot? Um, so I will be getting off on the right foot after I make my 180 playbook. <laughs> um, I typically like to, I have like um, a New York Times newsletter that I read first thing in the morning. And that always jars me. And then in order to like, come out of that a little bit, I then do the like mini crossword and the word game. And that's almost like I need, I need that to like cleanse my palate from reading the news, which I, you know, I think about that. I'm like, maybe I just shouldn't read that, you know, newsletter the first thing in the morning. Maybe, maybe I should jump in and do something a little bit better. So, uh, when Kristen had given hour asked if I wanted to participate in this, I was like, oh, yes, I do, because this is actually something that I think for myself is going to be really, really helpful. That's smart. I like that. And, and how about you, Alan? Uh, how do you start your day or, or part of your daily routine? Well, the first thing I do, folks, um, I'm just playing. So <laughs> now sometimes I just like lay in bed like, no, I don't want to get up. I go back to sleep for another 10 minutes. Right. And then I'm like, oh, crap, let me clock in. So that's really I'm, I'm being vulnerable here. So that's really what I do, folks. There's no there's no uh, great prep for Alan Levi Simmons. Like 
but when I, when I get up, when I get moving, um, I start to get motivated. And, you know, when I make my videos, like doing my videos on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, uh, just to engage with the audience, motivate somebody at the start of their day, that, that gets me grounded in my purpose. And I really feel, uh, you know, I feel excited about doing those things. It doesn't like overwhelm me when people say, Hey, Alan, you know, my morning's going rough already. And it's just seven o'clock in the morning. And I, you know, I feel inspired to one engage with them. And then two, you know, give off some of my energy. So I start my day struggling at first, uh, you know, struggling to get out of bed. But uh, once I get ready, once I get my coffee, you know, I, I take time to uh, just connect with myself, make sure that I'm happy, make sure that I'm not depressed. Cause you know, like, like you guys are saying, like you could wake up one day and be in a whole different state of mind. You could wake up depressed, out of funk, right? You slept on the wrong side of the bed or you just fell off the bed while you were sleeping. Um, you know, whatever that case is, you know, we never know how we would feel when we wake up. So I just make sure that I take time to engage with myself, like you guys are saying, before I do get engage with the world. Yeah, I like that. And I appreciate your honesty there because I'm the same way. I wake up just like, again, we're, we're doing this again, we're, another day. All right. Uh, all right. I guess we'll, we'll make it through. But yeah, hit snooze a couple of times. Like I always make sure I set that, that, you know, wake up call at least an hour before I really have to get up, like an ease into the day. But yeah, just kind of checking in with yourself before you get started on everything, I think is really smart. And how do you, you know, especially when I think about this in terms of like, okay, we're, we're being intentional in terms of now trying to take care of ourselves, which I think a lot of people do at the beginning of every year. You know, you get your New Year's resolutions and, okay, you're, you're gung-ho for the first two weeks, maybe even a month, and then you just taper off. Um, you know, how do you stay motivated in, in that daily self-care? Like, how do you continue to remind yourself that this is important? Uh, I'll start with you, Al. I, I'd say that's a great question for one. Chris, uh, I'd say uh, start with your why, like you have to have a strong why. Uh, and I thought that my why was everyone else. I thought my why was my grandmother, my father, my sister, my brother, my wife, right? But the why has to be you, you know, like the, the why, your why has to be when you start putting your why on everyone else, it's because you don't truly see the value in the you. So you say, well, I'm doing this because of my mom. I'm doing this. No, you have to do it for you first. You know, if you don't take care of you, everybody else will, will live on and you could just, you know, disappear or whatever it is, you know, like, but you have to take care of you. So I, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm taking care of Alan Simmons and I know my why. My why every day is because I want to see myself go a step further. I'm not trying to jump a whole mile. I just want to move a little bit for, uh, further in my life, in my purpose, in my journey. So take one step at a time. You know, and my mantra has always been this never stop, never quit, repeat. You know, um, so I, I keep that at the forefront of my mind every morning. And when I want to give up, I can't. <laughs> so, yeah. Is there a reason too why, like, obviously it's on your shirt, but I'm assuming you might even have it other places, like why you literally spell that out for yourself to be able to see that yeah. never stop, never quit, repeat? Yeah, man, because like, you know, so coming back from Afghanistan, from the RPG explosion, uh, coming back from the suicidal uh, thoughts, from putting the gun to my mouth, coming back from drinking every day, every night, coming back from smoking weed every day, every night, you know, coming back from pornography every day, every night. Like I was going through so many different levels and demons and different things that I was battling with that when I uh, started school at uh, Old Dominion University, I dropped out, threatened my professor. You know, I was just, my mind was going somewhere else. So I met my wife and I kept kicking myself in the butt about dropping out of school. I was like, man, I would have been an engineer, blah, blah, blah. You know, and years, years passed by and I'm just like, okay, now, you know, what am I gonna do with that? I attended school, academic probation, bam. I thought this was my purpose. No, you know, um, so while, I, while on academic probation, while I'm at this pivotal point in my life where I could drop out again, or I could do something different. And I said, I will never, I never want to ask myself, what if? So never stop, never quit, repeat was my way of telling myself, no matter what you face, like you have to continue, you have to persevere and persist through life. So that's, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, thank you for that. And thank you again for that, that, you know, your openness and sharing your story. I think that's really important for us to be able to you know, I, I'm a big proponent on, on using that, that past life, you know, not past life, but, you know, things that happened earlier in life, that trauma to be able to 
help others, you know, who may be struggling with some of the same things or been, you know, had some of those same experiences. So I, I really appreciate that transparency. I'm sure there's people right. in the audience who've experienced those same things and can now see that light that you're able to show them. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Anna, you know, to you, you know, how, how do you continue that momentum to be able to continue to take care of yourself and to check in with yourself? Um, I have to be really aware of it, to be honest. Like I, I need, um, I can get really anxious and I can start slipping pretty easily. So I have to be kind of like, Ooh, that's happening right now. And then have my tools to help manage it all within like reach. So whether that's like, a reminder to call a friend or call my therapist, or I always carry with me a, um, a sketchbook and a, like, uh, that I can either sketch or write poems in. And, um, I was in, on an airplane on an international flight coming back from, uh, seeing one of Mike's shows. And this is the first time I would visited him while he was doing like a solo tour after Chester died. And in the airplane, like, somewhere above the ocean with still probably a good like seven hours left to go I started having a panic attack which um uh, that is like zero stars do not recommend like you don't want to be having a panic attack in the airplane and so I had to be like okay what are what are my tools what do I have with me so I had taken a picture of a statue while I was in France and um, I had my pencils and I spent the rest of my flight drawing the picture of the statue that I had, I had taken a, a picture of. And um, that helped me so much because it helped me take like all of this and pull it right down to just the pencil on paper. And so I try and keep with me in my purse, sitting out on my desk in my office, um, just keeping a notebook and some pencils. And I love, I'll probably even put like a picture of my pencils like in, and I just got a new set. So I'm very excited, but like put a picture of like my pencils in my little 180 playbook of a reminder of like, that's something that can bring me right back into my body and can kind of like reset my mind. And it's almost like a meditation of sorts for me. Yeah, and I think it's so important what you said in, in terms of like having those resources with you at a moment's notice. So you're on a plane and, and you just need to get something out there or if you're at home, just, you know, if there are certain things that allow you to feel more connected, allow you to feel you know, more at ease with yourself, like make sure if, if you're able to, I, I, you know, not everything lends itself to this, but make sure you have those tools with you. Your tools are only as good as, you know, where they are when you need them. So um, I think that's a really good point. If you're able to, make sure you take those pens, those pencils, in my case, take my camera with me you know, allows you to just, you know, when you're feeling like you need to check in with yourself, allow you to have that escape and, and have that, that clarity. Um, Stephanie, how about you? You know, how, uh, how do you stay purposeful? How do you stay, you know, engaged with continuing this on a regular basis? I think just trial and error, like, uh, you know, having st or st starting and stopping a lot of start and stop stop and start i don't know how you say it <laughs> but you know what I'm, i i've done it and then i would stop and then i would notice how different i would feel and i think over time i just was like i need to do this um because and one of the signs for me is my mind starts um is jumping from one thing to the next constantly and thinking I have to do this, I have to do that, and I'm not in the present moment. And um, it's very noticeable at home where I'm trying to be a mom and do my own thing too. Uh, I'm trying to control things. I'm just not in the moment. And when that happens, you know, um, I it's a clear sign that I'm not doing what I what brings me, uh, what grounds me in the morning which is meditation and looking at the 180. But I just, I wanna say, Alan, your t-shirt, uh, this is amazing. I, I did an online course with a psychologist, a high performance psychologist named Dr. Michael Gervais and Pete Carroll, the coach of the Seattle Seahawks. And their whole thing is about mindset. And one of their biggest thing is to come up with a life philosophy, a personal philosophy for yourself which is basically your guiding principles in 25 words or less, one sentence if you can, one word if you can. And so that's your personal philosophy. And they have a whole process to guide you through it. 
um, they say we all have it. It's just about figuring out what it is. What is that that guiding thing for us? And that when we find it, then almost every decision, every moment where we're like uh, off kilter, you can you can say that to yourself, and you it connects to your core. And yeah. so that really that helped me so much finding my they call it personal philosophy. But you you got it. <laughs> you have your own too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and you actually just mentioned Stephanie, a few uh, you know people like have kind of given you inspiration, or, or you know there are places where you know you can check in and maybe get thoughts of wisdom. Are there any other places where you get guidance or motivation for yourself within this journey? Oh, uh, Stephanie. Oh, um, everywhere podcasts. I love uh, my top three podcasts. I would say are on being and. Um, hearing other people's stories did the 10 percent happier podcast finding mastery and the interview people fascinating people who talk speak with authenticity and speak of how they kept on going and i get i, I take notes while i do that and then i put them in my in my thing in my playbook uh, and then I, I have with you, I also took three books that were sort of very different books, but that I got a lot of inspiration from. This is a Joseph, uh, Joseph Campbell, Reflections on the Art of Living. I don't know if any of you have read this, but you can basically open it to any page and it is um, thought provoking, uh, inspiring. It's about, you know, he's all about the hero's journey, which is we all start somewhere we have um, trouble and we go into the woods to explore and then we come back to the village transformed and changed that's the metaphor for it but that the other another one which is actually much more um um uh, uh, grounded and you know not as out there is the obstacle is the way by ryan holiday and i read this when we went through a really um a health scare in my family and that gave me step by step um sort of things that i could do to help and focus on what's in our control and find gratitude and it, it, i felt like it was almost a playbook in itself and then this is po poetry by david white and i read that in the morning something i try to read a page of something in the morning that brings me inspiration i love all those recommendations thank you so i'm glad we're recording it so that way people can rewind and make sure that they they get all those books that they didn't write it down uh the first time i think that that's perfect um anna since we're talking a little bit about books let's, let's go over to the author how do you you know find this motivation and, and guidance along your journey um i think so for me i really love nature and being out um and uh taking care of my garden and so that kind of fits in in that uh it it's part of my journey because it always grounds me and in fact like one thing that i'll put in my playbook is i i have rose bushes but like you've gotta you gotta take care of the rose bushes right like you can't they, they might do okay but like if you're out there and you're deadheading them and you're you know like making sure that they've got the right amount of water and fertilizer then you're going to get some pretty roses and so um and these are from my garden which is really awesome but that's and i try and have if there's something like that like have it in my office while i am working um and i really take also inspiration from other authors i have some of my favorite other authors back here behind me uh i love reading a good book lately i haven't had as much time to actually sit and physically read so i'll listen to a lot of audiobooks and um and i and i used to be like the person who was just like if i started a book i'd make myself finish it all the way to the end and a new thing that i've started in the past like year or two is if if i'm like 50 pages into a book and i'm not feeling it at all i'll be like you know what i'm i'm not going to finish this book there's no reason for me to like suffer through it if i really want to know what happens in the end i'll like look it up online and find out how it ends but if i'm not loving it i don't want to like spend time and immerse myself in it and part of that too is because if i'm not loving a book and that's what i'm supposed to be like enjoying then why am i spending my my time with that and as an author i want to be reading books 
that really like inspire me and make me want to be a better author. And if that book isn't inspiring me, then it's, it's just not, it's just not worth my limited time. And I think maybe too, that's because my time is super limited as like a parent and um, an author and trying to just balance everything. Yeah, I definitely have to get better with not trying to finish everything. Uh, even even bad movies, I, I sometimes suffer through. So I need to, yeah, I need to get on your wavelength there. Alan, how about you? Where do you find your guidance and, and motivation? Uh, binge watching Netflix. I'm just playing. So uh, <laughs> no, I um books for sure. I did buy Anna's book as Anna knows for sure, but I have her book here. As you see, I have started reading. This is my little ghetto uh, bookmark right here. Uh, this is how we do it in the hood. If you don't have a bookmark, get a piece of paper. All right. So um, <laughs> I'm just playing. So I'm reading that. And I'm also, I went to a coffee shop. My wife has me drinking a lot of coffee now, but um, I don't know. I'll, I'll cover that word out, but it says you are a bad A, you know, how to stop doubting your greatness and start living an awesome life. So um, I bought this book from a coffee shop. I was like, I love the cover. And I like you, like, I want to read a book that will help me as an, uh, as an author as well. So I was like, wow, I like the yellow. I like the words. I like how bold it is and how unapologetic this book is already. And um, like, I, was it Stephanie, were you talking, were you the one that said that mentioned, or was it Anna that mentioned about, uh, I'm no longer a child anymore? Which one of you guys were, was that? That yeah. Was you? That was you, yeah. So, yeah. so when I saw the book, I was like, you know what? I, I wouldn't put a book out like this because my family would be like, oh no, you terrible person. You know, why are you cursing on a book? But I was like, I want to be this kind of person where I can just be out front about who I am. So that's the process I'm going through right now. So I have that book and I also wrote a book. Can I speak? I don't have my book on me because someone, uh, I let them look at my book and they were like, well, I'll give it back to you next week. And I was like, ah, okay. So I don't have my book on me, but Can I Speak Book is my, my book of poems that I wrote uh, You know, when I was going through my PTSD at its strongest, I wrote my book um, and I would write like poems about my, my childhood. I would write poems about the things I saw. I saw a drunk man stumbling from a restaurant one night when I was in Florida and he hugged the tree. And I made up this whole story about a guy named Charles Townsend who lost his wife uh, and, and Charles was suffering from depression and his two children were suffering as well because their dad was lost and no one was worried about Charles and Charles was at the bar drinking, you know, Charles is in his car. So I wrote that whole story, uh, watching a man come from a restaurant drunk, you know, and I was like, how can I get people to empathize about the next person? You know, because we all see people driving in their cars. We see people at the mall or the grocery store, but we don't know their stories. So when I connect with people, I love to learn about people's story. What makes you, you, you know, um, I'm sorry, I get so pumped up about the stuff, but, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I read books, you know, I, I've been, uh, struggling with that because I love Fortnite. I love playing uh, video games. If y'all don't know Fortnite, that's a video game that all the kids be playing. Your 13 year old boys are probably kicking my butt on that game. Um, and then Madden. So I, I, I play those games. It may be a stress relief for me. Um, as far as like with PTSD, playing those combat type, uh, video games. And then, uh, so yeah, and then I, I run from time to time. I've really slacked off over the last seven months, uh, just to let you guys know. But I was running for six months straight last last year, uh, and I'm gonna get back to it. Okay, so that's what I got. <laughs> we have faith. We, we you're gonna get back to it. I feel it. Thank you, brother. Uh, I appreciate it. Believe in me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and for those of you, uh, you know, listening here, I, I see it in the chat. You know, people are sharing some of their resources. So yeah, also share some of the resources that have worked for you, books or podcasts. Um, and also, you know, take away some of the ones that others are dropping in there. Um, and also use the, the chat to ask some questions. We actually have a question here from one of our audience members, Diane, um, who wants to know, and Stephanie, I'll start with you on this. So, you know, earlier we talked a little bit about that morning routine and how do you kind of set things off. But Diane's asking, okay, how do we end the day? Um, you know, do you have any advice on how to remain, remain peaceful during those quiet moments in life? And especially at night as you're trying to wind down, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you stay uh, grounded in those moments? So the, this little thing, it's called the five minute journal. Um, 
I have stuff on it so you can't see what the cover is but it's it helps you start your day with three things that you're grateful for how three things that would make your day great that are in your control a daily affirmation and then when you go to bed last thing before you turn the light off is three amazing things that happened today and it, I mean, it sounds so trivial and simple, but what that does is, especially on the days where things are not great, it really, uh, it's, it's such a good exercise to find a good thing. And maybe it's just that walk you took in nature or the sunset. And when you do it, I've been doing this for year, like, I don't know, five or six years. And you realize well, the more you do it, the more you find great things that happen and the simpler they are. And I think you, it helps train, you know, they, 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 there's a whole thing in introduction in the beginning, what it helps train optimism and it increases happiness, but it's just a great way for me to end the day. I look back a lot of times, I'm like, oh, this happened and I, I would have forgotten. Um, so, and then there's a section that says, what could I have done better today? Um, I actually don't like this section. <laughs> And it's not because I don't think I don't do anything wrong. I do. But then I'm like, then I'm focusing on something negative. So I, I don't, I'm like, yeah, of course I could have done this better. <laughs> I leave that empty, but that's how, <laughs> that, that's my night routine. I like that. I, you know, you were missing podcasts earlier. That's part of my night routine, you know, either podcasts, or like audio books, you know, when we're talking about books, I'm not always great at reading. So like, yeah, that helps me kind of wind down, but also kind of lose myself in a story, you know, as the, mm. In, in, instead of focusing so much on all my day-to-day -day craziness. But I also think you brought up a really great point in terms of celebrating those, those little moments, celebrating those victories every single day. And I know, you know, Alan, I know just kind of watching you on social media, that's really big for you, celebrating those small wins. Can you speak a little bit to that? And then also any other tips that you have for winding down for the day or, or in those quiet moments? Yeah, I, definitely uh, celebrating those small wins is very important because we we all look for that, that big picture, you know, in our day, you know, we have this idea of who we want to be, what we want to do, what kind of impact we want to make, or maybe we're just clueless about who we are. Um, and we're looking for the finished product. You know, I think when you when you focus on those small wins, like, hey, I got out of bed this morning, some people just don't know, when you hit rock bottom, when you're in depression, it is difficult to get out of bed. It is difficult to go wash your tail in the shower. It is difficult to go brush your teeth. It is difficult to go to the store to get yourself some food. So it is, it, it is very important to recognize, like I recognize that, hey, getting out of bed, being in my right mind, like that is a celebration. Let me, let me get a, give it up for myself. Okay, you know what? Yesterday was a little difficult, but I did not quit. Let me give it up for myself. Let's go, let's go. You know, and I, I'm like pep talk all day, you know, and um, I look in the mirror sometimes and I, I look at my reflection and I'm like, all right, this is who you are. Like, I can't, there's no filter that you can do in your mirror. There's no, I can't take away the freckles. I can't take away the nose. I can't take away some of the gray hair. I can't take away any of that when I look into the mirror. So I have to celebrate the person I am seeing in the mirror, the person that is an overcoming, the person that did not give up, the person that did not pull the trigger when I had that, that, that gun in my hand, you know? So like, there are so many small wins that we forget about, you know, and we get so... We, we beat ourselves up in the midst of the day, man, I hate my job. I, I don't love my job or man, you know, my marriage is struggling or man, my kids don't like me. You know, we, we focus on all of those things, but we forgot, man, I, I brought life into this world, man. I have an opportunity to make a correction, to make a change. So like you, you have time if you're, if you're alive right now, focus on your small wins. Remember that now is the best time to win. Now is the best time to win. Noun is the best time to win. So, yeah. I, I also think that repetitiveness of, of reminding yourself, I think that is, that is, well, I guess in a lot of things that you talk about, it is that repetitiveness. So, yeah, I yeah, think that's part of the course when it comes to you. But I think it's also really important and things that we should all take away is, yeah, being repetitive and celebrating our wins, being repetitive and reminding ourselves that we need to take care of ourselves. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I saw someone just mentioned that chat, you know, your, your, your words are, are part of their collection now. So, you oh, know, I think you. you've been dropping some excellent words with them as well as you, Stephanie and Anna. And I want to pivot over to you, Anna, as to, you know, things that, that you can mention um, that might be good for winding down for the day or, you know, how do you support yourself in those quiet moments? 
Well, like Stephanie, um, we, at the end of the day, when we're, my family tries to end on, actually it's two questions. Um, what are you grateful for? And what was your favorite part of the day? So when we get the kids into bed, we um, ask our kids those two questions and they share what they're grateful for and what their favorite part of the day was. And then I share those two things and my husband shares those two things. So, um, but then, you know, I put the kids down at like nine and I don't go to sleep sometimes until midnight or sometimes even later. If I'm working on a book, I am a night worker and I will be up until like 2 a.m. Like I, that's where I, I work best is like the creative, my creativity kicks in at 10. And so um, then I'll have all this time between like favorite part of the day and grateful for before I actually go to sleep. So I actually, I know it's a screen and it's probably not like the best thing to be looking at the blue light right before, but there's a, like a game on my phone called Plants vs. Zombies Heroes. And I'll play like a couple rounds of that right before bed because it's just like, you know, it's just kind of, it's like a puzzle game. It's not anything too big and it kind of takes like all that work and stuff and goes, okay, like you're not working anymore. You're not thinking about the day anymore. You're thinking about this game. And then by then I'm usually so exhausted that I'm like starting to fall asleep while I'm playing it. And I'll just turn it off like mid game and go to sleep. So that's kind of what, what I end up doing as my wind down. Yeah. And you know, the 180 playbook in itself is that daily self care. And, and just in general, we should be taking care of ourselves on a regular basis. So with that understanding, how do we define success or how do you personally define success? Um, Anna, for you, like how, how are you able to kind of contextualize the successes in, in that self-care, uh, mental and emotional self-care that you're doing? Um, that's such an interesting question because first of all, like uh, I'm married to somebody who is wildly successful in everything he does. And um, sometimes you can forget uh, the successes of your every day when you have somebody who's larger than life in your own life. Um, for me, uh, like a successful day is making sure that I'm, I'm, I am paying attention to myself. I'm getting all those little things done that I, I need to get done and I have to get done. Um, I like making sure that I have an hour of writing time. And even if it's not working towards the end goal of having a manuscript completed, but it is just sitting down and maybe writing some poems or, um, you know, maybe it'll be writing something for a blog post or, or sometimes writing a really angry email that I'm not going to send out at all just to get it like out of, of my thoughts and out um, of my body. But, um, you know, I think, I think really just, doing my best every day is, is a measure of success for me. And there are some days where I go to bed and I'm like, yeah, I did not, today wasn't a good one for me. I did not do my best, but I did my best for today. And so like, let's wipe it clean, go to sleep in the morning. Let's see if I can have a different day tomorrow. And sometimes even with that, I'll write down a few things of like, okay, this is what I want to concentrate on tomorrow. So when I wake up, I've got that list and I'm ready to go. I like that. And, and yeah, I'm definitely feeling the idea of uh, sending it, well, writing an angry email without sending it. So you're not internalizing it. You're also not sabotaging yourself. You put it in a very safe space and left it there. Just, yeah, make sure you leave that two line empty. <laughs> That's right. Always leave the two line empty. Um, so that way, even if you throw it in your drafts, it's not going anywhere. It's just empty. <laughs> very smart. Uh, Stephanie, how about you? You know, how do you define success within this journey? Um, I think success is such a dirty word, especially having a kid, you know, who just finished high school, going to college. And that's what I hear. So, oh, he's got to be, I live in the uh, uh, East Coast, uh, New York area. Like, he's got to be successful. And uh, it's so tied to money, to your job, to what other people, to status. And so to me, success is just exploring and learning who you are and living your life according to to that to what's in you to evolve 
throughout your life and to connect to the world and to others and to yourself with authenticity. Um, it's different for all of us, but I think for me, that feeling when you're in alignment with yourself and you're just like, yeah, I feel good. Like, it's not about the result. You're just feeling grounded and you feel okay. And that's success to me. Like you, truth, your truth is success and your truth with others and with the world and with yourself. Very well put. How about you, Alan? Well, I, um, I agree, Stephanie, like success is a dirty word. Um, it should never be spoken again. I'm just, so, <laughs> but seriously, like success uh, has been something that has pushed me down a lot more so than picked me up because of the comparison. You know, we compare, we compare, we compare every day. And, uh, you know, even when we don't want to, we're comparing. I'm riding in my little Hyundai Sonata with my antenna missing now. I see this guy in the Audi and I'm like, ah, I should be driving that Audi, you know? And I'm like, I, I don't, I, I forgot about the little Toyota that my dad bought me in high school that had a hole in the floor. Come on, I forgot about my pickup truck that used to shut off at the stop sign. You know, like, come on, man. I didn't, I, I came along, my, my Mitsubishi clip used to, used to, uh, used to rain when it rained, like the rain. I had a towel over my head, driving my car with my, my wife in the car. We over here riding around, water falling on us. Come on, the Hyundai is a step up for me. So, you know, so like, I'm saying all of that because is, you know, a lot of us, we live lives of comparison. We compare ourselves to, to who our parents used to be. We compare ourselves to what people want us to be. And we see the person that we desire to be and we compare ourselves to that person as well. Uh, but being grounded in the here and now, like Stephanie was saying, like being grounded in the here and now and accepting just the fact that you are alive is success. I think being alive is successful. You know, success doesn't matter to the dead. Every dead person that has succeeded in life, that success does not matter. It's just a memory. So while you still have life in your body and blood running through your veins, you are successful. And every, you can decide at this very moment that you will do things that can make you more successful, but you are already successful by just waking up and, and putting on your clothes in the morning um, and just being here. That, that is what success is. You know, everything else is additional. Everything else is add on. When you came into this world from your mother's womb, you were successful. <laughs> so that's what I have to say about success, you know? So don't, don't get so wrapped up into everything. You can, you can have a desire to have the big house, the nice car, the nice family, the big old picket fence, whatever you want in your yard, you can desire it, but do not let your desires consume you you know, you control your desires, control who you see in the mirror, control how you feel about yourself and everything else is gonna to gravitate towards you. All the right people, all the right things, all the right opportunities. So, yeah. No, and you, you know, you touched on perspective and, and just having that perspective within your own life, but also not allowing the perspectives of others to influence how you feel about your life. And I think that's a, a great way of putting it. And also, you know, I'll also mention from the side of just evaluating what you need help with, you know, don't qualify your trauma. Don't, you know, look at your life and feel like, oh, I can't feel bad about these experiences or work on these things that I need to overcome because it's not as bad as somebody else's, you know, situation. So I suffer from PTSD, but in the past, I felt like, okay, I don't need to focus on that because it's not as bad as somebody else's PTSD who may have went to war or, you know, may have grown up in the hood and, okay, I grew up in the suburbs, so I can't, I can, you know, I, I'm not valid within my own experiences. So do not do that. Um, and also, again, as you're going through your journey to find that success, um, which is that dirty word. Uh, but, you know, as we look at that, don't define it based on somebody else. Base it on your journey and how you're continuing to improve, whether it be incremental or big leaps. The incremental wins, as we talked about before, are just as important as those big wins. So as we close out, I want to come back around the room and um, just make sure that everybody has a chance to maybe express anything else that you feel like you want the audience to take away, whether it be about the 180 playbook in particular or about, you know, that daily self-care just in general. Um, and then also let people know, uh, again, where they can find you on social media, um, as well as any projects, whether they be books or podcasts or, or other places that they can find the work that you do. Um, so Alan, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, you know, wrap us up here and, and uh, let us know where to find you. Okay, folks. So wherever you are right now, just take a deep breath <laughs> and uh, center yourself. You know, uh, because I don't want you guys to just come to this webinar and be like, ah, you know, I'm on fire. And then you go back to your life and then life kicks you 
in the butt. And then, you know, you're like, ah, oh, you forget everything that we said today. Uh, make sure that you're just taking everything in. Make sure that you're not being overwhelmed. Um, and my last part is uh, another podcast that, you know, Anna didn't mention and Stephanie didn't mention that they watch every day is The Purpose Pod. Um, I'm just playing. But The Purpose Pod, I interview professionals um, from doctors, lawyers, kidpreneurs, mompreneurs, rappers, poets, pastors, anybody who was out here, like I said, living in their purpose, walking in their purpose. I've interviewed them. I've interviewed over 90 people since March of uh, two last year, March 21st, when the pandemic, uh, when we got on lockdown. So I started the podcast then, and I just wanted to highlight people's stories and reach people in their homes through podcasting to inspire and motivate them to live a purposeful life. Uh, my book, Can I Speak Book, is online. I'm, I'm just a real cool guy. So if you guys want to connect on Instagram, Alan Levi Simmons, if you want to DM me, you could DM me um, and we could have a conversation. Uh, just overall, make sure you're following Given Hour and just following us through this whole process. And uh, thank you for tuning in, folks. Never stop, never quit, repeat. Thank you, Alan. Anna? I just wanted to say that I was so looking forward to doing this today because when we had our conversation last week of just kind of like chit-chatting, I was just like, oh my gosh, I love everyone who is in this Zoom with me and I can't wait to like be there for the hour and talk more with them and get inspired because you guys really inspired me last week and um, also in today I was just like, oh my gosh, so many great things were said. Uh, and the other thing that I, I wanted to just say is that I love that there is like kind of a, like a slow, gradual um, pace to making this 180 that even with like last month, um, Stephanie and Given Hour like introduced it. And then this month we're gathering things. And then I think next month it's going to be like actually putting them together, which I'm hoping to kind of do. I want to do it as like a scrapbook. And then I think I'm going to take pictures of the scrapbook pages and put that in my phone. So I'll have both a physical copy and a digital copy. Um, but I'm just really like, I'm so excited about the process of putting together this 180 and really feeling like I have the time, like it's not something I need to rush and that I can really enjoy thinking about you know, all of these things that inspire me and um, all of the things that I, I want to include. And um, and which I will be including a picture of my book because that's actually um, a reminder of something that I worked on for a really, really long time and um, eventually got there, but it, it got there like an hour a day. And then finally I did get there. And I think a lot of things in life, we get there with these little time increments each day. Um, so such a good, good reminder of um, getting someplace by taking small steps. Thank you, Anna. And Stephanie, let me first say thank you again for creating the, the 180 Playbook and, and creating this incredible project for us to be able to, to, you know, share in this journey together as we try to take care of ourselves and you know, create a, a better living situation in our day-to-day -day lives and, and for the people around us, to be honest, and, and hopefully also inspire others to take the same action. So I want to, you know, finish off with you and, and, you know, allow you the space to mention anything else that we should know about the 180 Playbook. Um, you know, again, also anything else with, with daily care, um, but also, again, you know, how people can engage with the 180 Playbook and also engage with you. Yeah. Um, well, I love, first of all, thank you, Chris, for all the great questions. And I think what it showed was how we, the three of us are so different and our definition of success is different. And all these, and the audience here, all their, what, where they get their inspiration from is different. Um, so that's the 180 is, uh, you know, doing a 180 again from the outside world to the inner world and connecting with what's important to you. Um, Anna, I loved what you said about putting a picture of your book in it um, for everybody there. We said it a few times, but yes, putting pictures of, or um, reminders of the hard things you've accomplished uh, helps you remember that you can do difficult things. Um, the 180 playbook is just basically a place to remind ourselves of 
all the guidance we get so that we don't forget it because otherwise we will forget it and it is ever evolving uh and when you said that I, you like the slow pace it uh it it is ever evolving because we keep getting new guidance um if people want to engage with me uh send me on, on social media you know send me uh messages or with given hour uh, follow come to our next webinar i love questions um Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Alan, for your um, open hearts and vulnerabilities and given hour. Thank you for bringing it to life. <laughs> yeah, thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to you, the audience. And also, again, thank you so much to given hour uh, and, and especially, you know, Kristen and Nikki for helping put this all together. I want to leave space for you, Kristen or, or Nikki, if you want to chime in and, and add any other additional information that people should know. I think we're all set. We did put the link to our next webinar in October. Um, so feel free to check that out or go to the 180 webpage and you can find that link as well. And I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to do this webinar with us um, during lunchtime. It's Wednesday hump day, but we got a little bit of inspiration to carry on through the rest of the week. And um, I really appreciate all your time. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.